Hi, it's Dr. Z. In this video, I will review Z-tests. By the end of this video, you'll be able to conduct a two-tailed Z-test using a Z-score for a single sample M. Please print the corresponding handout for this video and feel free to pause the video at any time to take notes on the handout. Hypothesis testing is the heart of conducting research. In a hypothesis test, we conduct a research study with a sample and then decide if the sample supports a hypothesis about a population. Unfortunately, sometimes we do not know information about the population with which to make comparisons to the sample. A z-test uses the distribution of means to help us make those comparisons. We can figure out what a z-test is by simply breaking it down into its parts. First, the word test is referring to a hypothesis test. So we'll be using the four steps that you have already learned about hypothesis testing. Second, the z is referring to using a z-score. Basically, we will be conducting a hypothesis test using z-scores. Most importantly though, we will use z-tests when we do not know population variance or sigma squared. More specifically, that z-score will be for a sample mean. The previous hypothesis test that you learned was for a single sample x-score. This diagram you've already seen before and illustrates the process of hypothesis testing. We will use the same four steps in conducting a z-test, with some modifications along the way. Step 1, the yellow Lego, is to state hypotheses. Guess what? This step stays the same. This is also a friendly reminder to make sure to know whether you need to conduct a one-tailed or a two-tailed test. The hypotheses in this step should reflect what type of test you are conducting. Step two, the blue Lego, is to set criteria to make a decision where the study worked or not. Guess what? This step stays the same. Because the shape of a distribution of means is a normal distribution, you will do the steps as before while still using the normal curve table to find critical region Z. Step three, the red Lego, is to collect data and calculate sample statistics. This step is our only modification because we're using a sample mean now and the distribution of means. Since this is a z-test, we need to, of course, calculate a z-score. However, we first need to calculate mu m, sigma squared m, and sigma squared because we do not know population variance, and we need to use a distribution of means to figure them out. Please see Canvas for the video and example handout that reviews the rules and formulas for calculating these components. After that, we can calculate the z-score for the sample mean with this new formula. Well, really this formula isn't that new. Notice that this is a modified version of the z-score formula from chapter 3, where x is now replaced with the sample mean, m is replaced with mu m, or the population mean for a distribution of means, and sd at the bottom is replaced with sigma squared, which or sigma, which is standard error. Step 4, the green Lego, is making a decision about whether the study worked or not. And guess what? This step stays the same. If you need a refresher, please see Canvas for the video and example handout that explains these two decisions, which were first covered in Chapter 4. Now that we've reviewed the steps of a z-test, are you ready to practice your new knowledge? I have one practice example for you to review. This is a short summary of the four steps that we described above. Please note that these steps are for a two-tailed z-test. The one modification for this test is noted in bold in step three. Please pause the video to write down these steps on the video handout. 
This lecture example wants to know if being told positive personality qualities will impact or affect physical attractiveness. Since we do not know what effect positive personality qualities will have, we will conduct a two-tailed test with non-directional hypotheses. The details of this research study are also provided in your video handout. A sample was told positive personality qualities while looking at photos of individuals. The sample was then asked to rate those same photos on physical attractiveness. The general population has a physical attractiveness rating of mu of 200 and sigma of 80, which forms a normal distribution. I encourage you to pause the video here and try to do the four steps on your own first, then resume the video to show the answers. Step 1. Since we are studying the effect of positive personality qualities on physical attractiveness, the hypotheses will include these variables. Since the treatment in the study was being told positive personality qualities, I shorten it to PPQ. In notation, if the sample is not different from the population, then the sample should have the same mean as the population, which is mu equals 200. The research hypothesis will reflect that there is a difference. And in notation, if the sample is different from the population, then the sample should not equal the same mean as the population. Step two. As the researcher, we get to decide the significance level, and the preferred one is 0.05. Since we do not know if being told positive personality qualities are going to increase or decrease physical attractiveness, we need to draw a critical region Z for both tails, above and below the mean. The corresponding Z scores for a 0.05 significance level two tails is Z equals plus or minus 1.96. The box indicates the final answer that I will be looking for on problem sets and exams. Step three. Since we do not know population variance, we need to use the distribution of means for our calculations. We will use the rules and formulas to calculate mu m, or the mean of the distribution of means, then sigma squared m, or the variance of the distribution of means, and finally sigma, which is standard error. We will use the modified z-score formula that allows us to compare our sample mean with mu and with sigma. We calculate using these values, and the z-score for the sample is z equals plus 2. The box indicates the final answer. Step 4. Now, we need to compare the sample z-score that we calculated in step 3 to the population prediction which we determine in step 2. In other words, does the z of plus 2 fall in the critical region z from step 2? Well, since plus 2 is above the mean in the tail, past the critical region z of a plus 1.96, the answer is yes, and the decision is to reject the null hypothesis. The box indicates the final answer that I will be looking for on problem sets and exams. Overall, it looks like being told positive personality qualities does have an effect on physical attractiveness. More specifically, since the z-score for the sample was a plus 2, which is above the mean, it looks like physical attractiveness increased. After a hypothesis test is conducted, the researcher must always report and interpret the results of the study. If you need a refresher, please see Canvas for the video and example handout that it reviews summary and interpretation statements, which was recently covered in Chapter 4. Wait, we're not done yet. Let's practice those summary and interpretation statements. I encourage you to pause the video here and try to write the statements on your own first. Then resume the video to show the answers. The summary statement will consist of two sentences. The first sentence will report the mean of the sample, and the second sentence will report the z-score, 
the significance level used, and the decision you made. Since the z-test was statistically significant, the interpretation statement will be only one sentence. In summary, research often involves using samples where we do not know the population variance or the population standard deviation. Therefore, we use a distribution of means to help calculate the z-score for the sample mean in order to compare it back to the population. In other words, we learn how to conduct a z-test. Learning how to conduct a z-test for a single sample is one more major Lego building block needed to understand statistics.